All right, welcome guys uh, to another tutorial being brought to you by the AudioNewsroom.net. I'm your host Mitch, and let's get started. We're going to take a look at Sundog Scale Studio today. Um, I'm going to be using it inside Logic, and uh, so I thought I would uh, take just a minute and uh, do a few things in Logic first. Uh, if you go to um, Audio MIDI Setup, nothing shows up. Uh, go to your MIDI Studio show MIDI studio um, and uh, the IAC drivers click just make sure that the device is online because you'll be using that to send MIDI to Logic um, haven't really researched if there's any kind of other virtual MIDI but um, one thing I noticed with Sundog uh, it's a lot different than iOS where everything kinda shows up MIDI wise or most everything shows up MIDI wise when I went to preferences and I didn't have the IAC driver checked and all I had was my um, MIDI keyboard and stuff like that it was only showing that stuff but I couldn't route it anyway so I had to have this uh, IAC driver it's kinda like the virtual MIDI um, bus <clears throat> um, so that's my output um, it does send and receive MIDI clock um, it works really well with the uh, MIDI mucks um, with the iPad. I'll probably do a uh, another little video tutorial on that um, at some point. And then inside Logic, which their MIDI is probably the worst MIDI setup out of the box. Now you can do a lot with it once you dive into it, but it's just painful to dive into and kind of understand sometimes. Um, because it just sends everything to everything um, but and maybe I'll just do that then I'll just start from scratch so let me just close out this project don't save and it's just do a new software instrument let's go ahead and do three of them and I guess we can name that bass keys lead maybe something like that um, and right now it'll send everything to everything if I hit play here well, I don't have any instruments but um, I don't have any instruments loaded but it will send uh, everything to everything um, and there's no way to change that um, which always gets on my nerves uh, but it works really well on main stage which you have a lot more control over that um, sure I'm just picking random stuff not even sure what this will sound like I'm sure this will be it's only sending to what I have selected but it don't matter what I have in here where here I can select different channels for different different things so it don't matter but if I go under media environment um, this will kind of be the view you <coughs> normally get uh, I mean, so you get the three channels that I have open or the three tracks so if you go to all objects actually let's go to clicks imports it'll show you this so what I did is oops cleared the cables clear cable um, and we can just oops stop and we can just delete delete all that because it basically sending everything from physical input through a keyboard into the sequencer and everything receives from the sequencer but what I'm doing taking the physical input and then I'm gonna add a channel splitter right here and so I'm just gonna drag the second 
up to the channel splitter and that'll send all its MIDI to this channel the channel splitter and then you can go to all objects and if you click view by text and uncheck the text it'll show all of this and then I can go because the sum will do everything but then I can grab the first one drag it to base and drag the second one drag it over to keys and the third one drag it over to lead and then whatever I send it won't matter it doesn't matter over here what channel I have selected or whatever because um, Move all that stuff down. Okay, that's better. And so what I did is just change channel, change that one to channel two because it's sending chords, and change channel three to send bass. be sending lead get into the Sundog Scale Studio. So we got song parts up here at the top and uh, just think of those as like verse, intro, chorus, verse, whatever you want to name them and if you click the song mode here it will loop. It'll loop in between each of them after it finishes like intro four bars it'll go on to this one and then that one and then once it gets to the end it'll cycle back through. If song mode is not checked, then um, <clears throat> it'll just loop what is being played, um, what song part you have selected, and then it will, uh, if you click on another one, it will switch to that one whenever you get to the, when it gets to the end of that measure, or that bar. So if it's four bars, and at the end of the fourth bar, it'll jump on to the next one. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, all right, so now we got... Um, this is kind of like the little timeline, and uh, each of these parts can be our individual settings. So think of this as one whole page. This is a completely different page. This is a completely different page. Um, everything is independent, uh, including uh, the bass note and the bar length and the chords and the swing and the tempo. If you want everything to match as far as swing and tempo, you can click on these link tempo to of all song parts and link swing of all song parts um, and so you can rename all of this stuff um, I was having issues earlier when I was renaming and trying to record but I think it was because I was trying to do a screen record along with uh, trying to change the names but um, as you can see, you can change the names, first part, and then if you just copy that, it'll just keep on. And then once you get too many, you can just scroll like that. Um, and so I won't change any of these names during this tutorial, but... Um, so I want intro, if I want this chord progression uh, to be 1-1, one, one, and you can have different uh, chords here. You can add your own chords if you want to. Um, and so I got this little chord progression going, and we can sample it if we wanted to. Um, and this little MIDI button right here, if we wanted to drag it over to the keys, 
then there's the chords straight into MIDI so that's nice too and if you're in Ableton um, you have a lot more um, options uh, I think you can drag um, uh -oh. if you're over here and you drag the MIDI it will drag however many active channels you have into individual um, clips it'll drag the MIDI over to the clips and which is nice I only have the light version of Ableton so I don't use it that much um, let's see and so we got tempo swing chords you can each of these if you just wanted a one bar intro you know into something else then you could do that uh, over at the audio bus forum they had asked um, somebody had asked about a um, doing non-traditional um, chord uh, progression because as you can see here it's based on your chords or on your bass note and your scales and if you try to do a custom chord you can only use scale notes um, but and he was wanting to do like like a F, bunch of F uh, major or a bunch of major seventh chords um, and so what I figured out is you could just uh, since there's not a chromatic kind of all note scale then you could just change the bass note of each part and then select that certain part and if you just wanted like one bar one bar you could have one bar one bar one bar one bar change the bass note and then go in each individual and change the chords that you want and uh, and then hit song mode it would loop between and uh, what's good about that is um, if you go down here so I have this bass part right here um, it's muted it's going chord notes and so if I just drag this right here in this pattern trigger and press play let's see And so what it should do is this will play the chords using the keys and this one will play um, the bass notes and it'll follow the chord notes and so as you can as you can watch as it's playing you can watch these notes down here change fall on your chords you can it'll automatically program in um, it'll change the notes down here based on what chord it's in or if you wanted to do say you wanted your lead to just play around with the scale notes um, then that would work as well um, and let's see so each uh, each of these instruments is what they call them I call them little loop uh, I guess little instrument loops because they're um, I just look at this part as a loop and it can be um, it'll be as long as the length and bars per part but you can um, change the length of what it'll arpeggiate down here the pattern and uh, Um, let's see what else you can change the octave per channel so each of these this part is corresponds with the whatever is highlighted up here and you can solo and mute so it should actually you could actually do this um, you could I think you could set it up and uh, sequence and do some live stuff um, or you could just I think it's gonna be really good for me as far as just um, not having to sit there and tediously program in all the MIDI notes for chord progressions and then I can focus on um, changing up the chord progressions and seeing you know alternating different um, chords and types of chords and rhythms 
And so if we just solo this, I'll kind of explain the uh, kind of how the patterning works. So um, a lot of times when you just do the chords, you'll just have this, and it'll play um, the chords on the beat, how you have it set up in the chord section. But if you add the length, um, it'll kind of play it in some sort of rhythmic pattern if you wanted it to. And then if you do the click once, we'll add a, another step to the rhythm and then click uh, another time it'll add a, um, a pound symbol and that's basically a stop. And so you can kind of get a little pumping action going on. Um, something else and it'll show up and I think it'll show up in here where you can just load it from wherever you save it from um, I think he's done a really good job designing the app uh, I think it would be awesome as on a touch touch screen so uh, Windows users can uh, take advantage of that because it works with Windows and Mac and uh, if he ported it over to iOS, I think it would do really well. Um, especially even if you just had your iPad and had uh, this on your iPad and you were just sending it to um, using MIDI Mux or Music I.O. sending it to your computer to sequence so you could have them on both screens. Um, I think it would be really, really fun and... Um, it would just add that much more to the integrating your iPad into the uh, your uh, actual studio. But um, and so yeah, you can let me do I have all that playing? Let's see. Yeah, and as you can see right here, it's playing all the it's playing everything. So you can come in here and mix, or if you're like I don't like that lead. Um, of it and then if you click this record button up here you can kind of play around with the and then we can bring the octave down for the bass um, if we wanted more of a simple bass line just a kind of a do 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 So the possibilities are pretty endless um, with this and if you can just click song mode and play the whole thing out and if you wanted to um, click record right there and then I just have input to the individual section, so I guess I need to figure out what I would need to do to add it to the sequencer because it's just sent into the channels and not to the sequencer input. Um, so maybe that'll be another video. Uh, or you could just, when you're at this point, 
you could just you got something you like so that's channel one the base so we can drag that up here oh it drags everything like it does in uh, Ableton okay so that's nice so there's that's I guess that's the whole song all the parts of the song so that's nice um, yeah I learned something new earlier when I had tried it um, maybe I didn't have enough maybe I didn't have MIDI and all the channels down here but when I was dragging it up it was only doing one channel at a time but and so then you could easily go into go into here and change the velocity and do some more stuff add some effects and you got a whole song and it took a lot less time than sitting here clicking in each individual note and um, things like that so um, so that's it that's Sundog Scale Studio um, if you have any questions uh, leave a comment below always uh, like comment subscribe and uh, make sure you check out the audio newsroom.net talk to you later